All right, guys, I am back with another story time. Yes, the last video I talked to you guys about some families that regretted moving to Somerville. And today, I am gonna talk to you about two other stories and both very different, but let's talk about them because I think it's important for you to understand and hear these stories so that you can avoid these pitfalls and not make some of these same choices. Help me help you. This first story I'm gonna to talk to you about is a tale of love and lessons and a family's journey to Somerville that was a bit rocky. Today I'm talking about the Johnson family. Like many others dreaming of a fresh start, they decided to relocate to Somerville, South Carolina. However, with a very strict budget of $300,000 and not, not a penny more. They embarked on their house hunting adventure with very high hopes. However, they did learn very quickly that 300,000 just wasn't really getting them what they hoped and desired. But Mr. Johnson was like, Ryan, not going a penny over. Ain't gonna happen. I said, okay, we'll keep looking. So Somerville's charm, the excellent schools in the friendly neighborhoods made it a perfect place for them to call home. The Johnsons wanted a place where their daughter, Emma, could grow up, play in the backyard, and make lifelong friends. Their search was absolutely exhausting. House after house, it needed so many extensive renovations. Because when you look at Somerville, what people don't seem to realize is, you know, 300,000 Today is not the same 300,000 it was five, six years ago. It, it's, it's just not. And you're more inclined to find a home in really great condition at 350 versus 300. And that's just because of the extensive renovations that some homes need. We would go into a home and look at it with them and each one eating into their budget and dampening their souls a little bit because it just seemed like every home they looked at, they did not like or there was a major issue with it. So just about when they are ready to give up, they sent this property to me. And this is the home that I call the red flag home. And if you're somebody that's like, well, Ryan, why would you call it a red flag home? Because the home was charming and it was spacious backyard, which is exactly what they wanted for Emma. Instantly, they fell in love with this home, but it had issues, many of them. Everything from cracks in the walls to a, a leaky roof. Um, there was definitely some outdated wiring because uh, I could tell they had like a little Amazon Alexa plugged into an outlet and it was, you know, it just, it was sparking. It sounded like it was sparking on the inside, you know, lots and lots of issues, lots of red flags. And so these really stood out during the initial walkthrough with them. Despite these concerns, the Johnsons were kind of captivated. The price was there. They could definitely picture their daughter, Emma, playing in the backyard. Um, they wanted, they got the vision of hosting family barbecues and planting gardens back there because there was a space for a garden. Um, they could, the, the, it was just like a dream. And they were like, we, we, we can make this work. We can make this, we can do this. And in fact, they wanted to make an offer convinced that the sellers would agree to fix all the glaring issues. And as their real estate agent, as their buyer's representative, I had to caution them, guys. It's, it's risky to assume the sellers will fix everything or anything, for that matter. And I explained we should really get a home inspection to give us a clear picture of what we're dealing with. Reluctantly, they agreed, and an inspection revealed even more problems. We ended up having an issue with the plumbing in one of the bathrooms. There was an outdated HVAC system that was probably gonna need to be repaired or replaced in the next five to 10 years, um, and structural issues. And, and so the repairs needed were somewhat kind of far beyond what they had anticipated. And that's where, after a lot of negotiations, the sellers were like, okay, all right, this is an offer, we'll take, but instead of us fixing the repairs, how about we just credit them? And the Johnsons, they, they were like, hey, we're gonna take it, seems like a win. And the Johnsons felt good moving forward. $7,500 credit to fix any of the, the visual or issues with the repairs. They thought that was a, a great option and they wanted to proceed forward. However, once they moved in, the reality of the situation hit hard. The repairs were extensive and costly. 
Um, what they thought was gonna be manageable fix turned out to be a $10,000 plus headache. And the joy of their new home was overshadowed by all the stress and unexpected expenses. And if their budget had just been $50,000 higher, they could have afforded a home with a few other issues. And, and I, always, I always ask Mr. Johnson, I was like, listen, why are, like, I, I get it. Like maybe we go up to 310, 315, like and get exactly what you're looking for. He was like, I don't want to go over 300. And I asked him, I was like, well, wh why that number? Back in Virginia, we could afford a $300,000 home and manage the payments. And I kept saying to him, yeah, but the payments are gonna be different here on a $300,000 home. He goes, I don't care. I don't wanna go over 300,000. I got it, I'm gone. And for some people, it's about the number. And I understand that. And sometimes it's, you, you know, you can't, you can't get everybody to kind of see what you're always trying to tell them. But yet through the challenges, the Johnsons actually found strength with their church and the local community. Uh, they actually spent the weekends working on their home and had some friends come over and help them and actually teaching them new skills on how to do things in their home that they didn't know how to do before. Um, they created a lot of new, you know, new memories with their daughter and their daughter loved the backyard. So that was a win, you know, their daughters, you know, just absolutely blossomed. Uh, even though the situation looked bleak and it was frustrating at first, but there was a, there was a positive side to this. And I believe their family actually grew a lot closer realizing that home is just more than walls and roof. It's, it's love and effort that you put in. And they absolutely love that house despite the issues and they're getting it all fixed up. Their journey to Somerville taught them an actual valuable lesson about you know, patience, uh, the true meaning of home, and despite the initial heartbreak in the financial strain, their building now got some money in the house, they've fixed a lot of the issues, so now this home, if they ever do decide to sell this home, they're gonna have done a lot of the big things that most people look for when they're buying a new home. And so the Johnson story is a testament to the fact that sometimes the most meaningful experiences in life for a lot of people come from the unexpected challenges we face. And guys, if you're considering a move, you have to remember the Johnson family, a higher budget might have brought them comfort and a few and a few less surprises but the real value of a home lies in the memories that you create and the love that you share within its walls and that's why i think we need to take away from this experience is that hey it may not always be perfect and the home may not have check all of the boxes but it's what you do with the home and how you live in it and how you make it yours that makes it a home i am the gatekeeper of my own destiny all right guys jumping in to my next story story number two i call this one a new beginning it's the story of john and lisa john and lisa i met them uh about a year year and a half ago and they were a young couple they were super fun i liked i love talking to them because i was like hey guys don't be careful this is the master bedroom yeah baby <laughs> yeah. We, were, we were having a lot of fun time uh and we and we got along really good our personalities jived and john and lisa were just young couple starting out got married recently, they're excited, yet anxious about buying their first home. John works for one of the parts distributors here in Charleston, he makes an excellent paycheck and sometimes gets some really awesome bonuses. So they had saved diligently and they were finally ready to take the plunge into home ownership. So when they reached out, the market was daunting with interest rates climbing almost daily and media reports warning of unaffordable housing prices, they felt overwhelmed and they believe that the new construction homes were only for the wealthy and only the people that are earning six figures or more the idea of affording a brand new home seemed like a distant dream determined to find a place of their own john and lisa started looking at all these older homes each property they visited was either too small needed some renovation and repairs or it was just priced way above its value and it just really wasn't worth what they were asking. And so they felt disheartened. You know, they were like anybody, they just kind of were like, ah, we're never gonna find it, this is, this is a nightmare. And so they thought they might just have to settle for a house that didn't meet their needs or dreams. Now, as their neighborhood expert superhero, Pumpy Breaks Key, Ryan McHugh, I saw their frustration and I knew there was a better option for them. So I said to John and Lisa, hey, have you guys considered new construction? I asked one afternoon and they both looked at me and then, looked at each other hesitantly and doubtfully and then looked back and said we actually thought that those homes were too expensive for us to afford and john admitted that he thought that the interest rates were also so high right now and him and lisa wouldn't be able to afford a payment and i said 
I understand your concerns and I began to explain. In our current market, many sellers aren't offering incentives to buyers. However, builders are providing significant incentives to attract buyers. Everything from covering closing costs to offering interest rate buy downs, a refrigerator. These benefits can make new construction homes much more affordable than you might think. So they were both intrigued, but I could tell they were both being, they were pretty skeptical. John and Lisa agreed to actually visit a new construction neighborhood I recommended. As we drove into the community, I could almost immediately start to see them, like their eyes lit up. They saw the amenity center, the pool, the neighborhood was vibrant and welcoming. And the homes are beautiful and really nice and well-maintained streets. And John was like, wow, this is, this is really nice. And I said, the builder's representative was willing to meet with us and he greeted us warmly and took us on a tour on the golf cart. Call it the golf cart of love. I love you, dude. I love you, bro, Montana. I love you, Holmes. I love you, Brosif Goebbels. I love you, Machacha. I love you, Tico Brohe. Okay. You get on this golf cart and you're gonna fall in love with whatever house he pulls up to, I promise. So John and Lisa were both absolutely amazed. The homes were spacious, modern, and equipped with the latest energy efficient and smart home technology. They loved the idea of moving into a brand new home where everything was pristine and under warranty and there was a lot of other young families and first time home buyers moving into the neighborhood as well. And the builder explained the incentives, covering closing costs, offering interest rate buy down, and even providing an appliance package. They couldn't believe it. The false narratives that they heard were being shattered right before their eyes. The affordability of these new homes combined with the incentives made it clear that they could indeed afford a beautiful new construction home they were no longer stuck considering older overpriced homes that just didn't meet their needs. And John and Lisa made the decision right then and there. And it was like, what happened was we ended up standing out in the parking lot and this question just came forward. And then we were the, you know, okay. the 30 minutes go by. I'm like, we're not leaving this parking lot. I'm like, I don't think they're going to leave this, this neighborhood without buying that house. So, they ended up choosing a lovely three bedroom home with a spacious backyard on a pond lot with wooded tree buffer, perfect for the family they planned to start. The process was absolutely smooth and they felt supported every step of the way. The incentives provided by the builder made their dream home ownership not just possible, but comfortable and exciting. I mean, when things just work out like that and there's not a whole lot of stress, not a whole lot of drama, we kind of always go, okay, well, what's the catch? You know, what's, when's the bottom gonna fall out? And that didn't happen here. Their story is an absolute reminder that sometimes the information we receive can be very misleading. It's essential to explore all options and not let fear or misconceptions hold us back. John and Lisa discovered that with the right guidance and open-mindedness, their dream home was well within reach. So as you navigate your home buying journey, remember that John and Lisa didn't let false narratives or fears dictate their choices. Explore all your options and you might find that perfect home with the best financial situation. Trust me, it's, it's just waiting for you around the corner, but that's why you need to reach out to me and my team. I help folks like this all the time. I help first time home buyers. I help folks who are buying their forever home. No matter what phase of life you are in or what you're looking at, I can help you. And most importantly, I can educate you so that you make the best decision for you and your family. We're family now and I got your back forever. You hear me? If you want to see more great content in more great neighborhoods in Somerville, go ahead and click this video right here and I'll catch you guys next time. Ryan McHugh, your neighborhood expert. Give me a call, shoot me a text, 843-226-5535. I'll see you guys next time.